everybody. So you probably already know what that truck is behind me. That is the Ram Power Wagon. It's been around for a number of years now. We've reviewed it. We love this off-road truck. But one of the most common complaints we've heard is, well, where's the Cummins? Why can't I get the diesel? Well, you now can get diesel HD off-roaders, just not from Ram. And my friend Roman here brought something along. So what'd you bring, Roman? That's right, Steve. I've got the AT4 HD Duramax. Yep, it's a diesel. It's well, GMC's most off-road worthy heavy-duty truck, and we're here in Moab, and it's head-to-head, -head. diesel yeah. versus gas, Ram versus GM. So let's find out which one's best. What do you want to do? Uh, I mean, let's go hit this trail right here, Cane Creek, and uh, we'll figure out which one's better, diesel or gas. Yeah, let's switch trucks halfway through, and then at the end, we'll decide which one we like best. Sounds good to me, let's hit the trail. So we started down this trail here. This is Cane Creek in Moab, and uh, it's a six out of 10, so it is uh, fairly challenging, especially for these big beastly trucks. Okay, everybody, first decent sized obstacle here on Cane Creek, and uh, it's just this little rock climb. Now, I should have plenty of clearance to get up and over. and plenty of power, even though I'm still in high. I haven't needed low yet. Crawling up. And I'm really curious to see how that diesel compares. I mean, with over 900 pound-feet of torque. All right, see, so I picked King Creek because I thought it was gonna be a perfect trail to test these two trucks. It's a six out of 10 in terms of difficulty, so it's rocky, but you know what the most important thing about it is? No, what's that? I mean, it's gorgeous. I hope that's part of it. It's wide open, dude, so we can get <laughs> these huge trucks through here, you know? If you pick something that was a lot tighter, we'd be uh, scraping and scratching the sides of these trucks. The pinch drive them up like nobody says, oh my god, this thing is really not set up for <laughs> really any kind of rock crawling. Hey, uh, I saw you coming up those rocks back there, getting a little bit hung up. What, what was going on there? That's the old G80, right? It doesn't lock up until get wheel spin it's not a great solution gotcha yeah it got you over but a lot slower than the power wagon did you know I'm having a hard time even keeping up with you the suspension on this is set up for towing and not necessarily for off-roading well you'll see when you get in this truck it's uh, it's a much rougher ride yeah no doubt that's where the power wagon's got that advantage I mean the suspension here is a little bit softer I got the built-in shock so you know it's a little bit more uh, compliant However, that means I can't home nearly as much payload, so the power wagon is just so focused on off-roading, it doesn't care about anything else. Power wagon don't care. Yep, power wagon don't care. That's a shout out to you, Nathan. Check it out, guys. I've got the GMC Heavy Duty AT4 HD. And what does that mean? Well, it means it's a heavy duty truck that can tow. It's got a big old diesel engine, but best of all, it's got all the good GMC off-road gear. And that includes a G80 rear locker, a low range off-road, well, I'm gonna say ready tires are not as good as the ones on the power wagon because these are not as aggressive. But check this out. Look at these red tow hooks. Oh yeah, if I get stuck, power wagon can always tow me out. Plus, I've got about 10 inches of ground clearance, and I've got all the torque in the world. Now, let me tell you about the off-road gear on the Power Wagon, and first, let's talk tires. So, over here on the GMC, these are Goodyear Trail Runner ATs, and you can just tell they're just not as aggressive. The tread blocks are much closer together, unlike these Duratrax, which have these big tread spaces. Now, there is one area, though, where the Power Wagon is not as good, and that's just size. These are 33s, these are 34s, so too bad there isn't a bigger tire on this power wagon. But let me tell you about the other things that makes this truck so good off-road. So ground clearance, 14.2 inches. Now that is body ground clearance, the true ground clearance to the rear differentials closer to nine, but uh, even still impressive numbers. And then we have all the best off-road gear you can get. We got a Warren Z on winch, comes straight from the factory, a disconnecting front sway bar, uh, lockers front and rear. There's no doubt that Ram really focused on off-roading with this power wagon and it shows. So 
So even though I'm down on horsepower and torque compared to that GMC, this truck does have a lower crawl ratio. So once I stick her down in four low, you do get access to uh, a pretty immense amount of torque, even though the numbers don't look like it. So Roman just told you guys that GMC rides way rougher than this truck. And yes, that is a lot because it's so focused on towing and payload still. It can still work really hard, unlike the Power Wagon. But there's another aspect to that, and it is the weight. I mentioned 500 pounds lighter. Well, that's quite a bit of weight to be lugging around out here and bouncing up and over rocks. So that inherently is also just going to make his truck ride a little bit heavier, a little bit stiffer, whereas a little bit less weight here in the uh, PW allows it to uh, move down this trail faster for sure. So right here in front of you is the only engine you can get under the hood of the Power Wagon. That's a 6.4 liter Hemi Gas V8. It makes 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque hooked up to an eight-speed automatic transmission. Now, those numbers are definitely the reason why people have been clamoring for a diesel. That GMC has over twice the torque that this truck have, which is, you know, a little bit too bad. This GMC has, well, just a lot more of everything. Not only twice the torque, 910 pounds foot of torque with the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax, but also, well, more than twice the payload. It also costs about $9,000 more. It also has two more gears, so we're looking at a 10-speed automatic, and at the end of the day, it's got a lot more weight. So the question is, which of these two is better on the trail? Steve, shall we go hit it? Let's do it. So Roman, as I'm sure you know, this Power Wagon has a disconnectable front sway bar, and right up here I think is the perfect obstacle to show it. So it's basically a little ditch crossing, and I want to show you just how much I can flex. Dude, I know you can flex a lot, but let's see how much the Power Wagon can flex. <laughs> yeah, 10-4. So here we go. We're coming into it now. And the idea here is, with the sway bar disconnected, it should allow for quite a bit of articulation. So as I come through this ditch, oh yeah, and now I'm about to come up on the passenger. My rear is still climbing there. Yeah, there's my front passenger. It's going to start climbing now. I'm about to lift it. Right there, yeah, right there. Look at that. Oh my god, that is crazy. <laughs> She's hanging. <laughs> it's hanging. <laughs> I'm really curious to see what happens when I try that with the GMC because it's not going to be this, uh, this good. And of course the idea is the more tires on the ground the better because that means traction. Right now you're... <laughs> oh! That. Okay, yeah, I don't have traction. Although I came in here with nothing locked. So I'm going to lock up my differentials right now and hopefully that's the difference maker. So now I have it down in four low, because you need it in four low. And now let's see if I can't lock both the front and the rear axles. Axle lock in progress. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys. I didn't even touch the throttle there. All I had to do was lock them up, and this thing just walked right through it. That was impressive, Steve. That was wild. I locked him up. I didn't even have to touch the throttle. The thing just creeped right off. But now you can see the disadvantage to four low. I'm not going to make this turn. The, uh, the turning radius is horrible. <laughs> so, I suppose the question is what will happen when the GMC, GMC tries the same thing, huh? Yeah, I think your wheel's going to be way off the ground. I think she'll do it, though. All right, Steve, I'm just going to follow in your footsteps. All right, man, roll on through, and I'll keep you on the same line. So I've got independent front suspension, which uh, should make this a little bit more tricky. Yeah, no, you're not going to have the flex that I had. All right, keep on rolling, keep rolling, and now start coming passenger. Keep coming passenger. Yeah, you're looking good. All right, here we go. Yeah, stay close to you. Yeah, that's perfect right there, straight through. So far, so good. Comes the tricky part. Oh, outside. Oof! It's like a cheater daughter. <laughs> Your approach angle's not quite there either. Ho oh, ho! That rear tire's hanging. I would crank it harder to the right, huh, Steve? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Keep going, passenger. Oh, you're okay, actually. It's going to lift right off of there. Oh, wait. Oh, but, but this is soft. Hold on. Here's the issue because you don't have the front locker. Yeah. 
Okay, just try applying a little bit of throttle. There it is, nice. Well guys, you could see it from there. I mean, the approach angle's not as good. It wasn't gonna get up there without a little bit of scraping. He definitely left behind more marks than I did. Uh, and then that front locker, the lack of front locker just made that front wheel spin, really struggle to get traction. So uh, yeah, when the going gets tough in uh, things like this, you want the power wagon, no questions asked. <laughs> All right, Steve, now that we have switched heavy-duty trucks, I gotta tell you, this power wagon is such a better ride. Yeah, the suspension here, differences are night and day. The power wagon just really swallows stuff up, where this GMC, you feel every single rock on the trail. And of course, the payoff is payload, right? I got almost 3,000 pounds, you got just over 1,000, but if we're talking about off-roading, it's gotta be the power wagon all day for suspension. You know, the GMC has great cameras, and this one has okay cameras too, but I don't actually need the cameras here. I can see over the hood of the power wagon. Try that with the GMC. Yeah, I mean, you got the functional hood scoop, which is cool, but it definitely adds an extra inch to this hood, which just takes away your vision on the trail. Uh, and you're right about the cameras here. They really do offer all kinds of different views, plus they look really crisp. Yeah, one of the things that I love about the GMC are these cameras. The hood is just so high that you really can't see what's in front of you. But with these cameras, I not only get what's behind me, what's in front of me, but I can also do this. Check it out. I can zoom in and look straight down so that I can see any rocks or obstacles that are directly in front of me. How cool is that? Same thing with this shot. I can see behind me. I mean, there's every potential camera angle, including, check it out what's on my side. So when you have a big old truck like this, look at that, a bird's eye view of the back, bird's eye view of the front, and straight, whoa, out the front. It really is great to have. One thing I have to hand it to the GMC is that Duramax is smooth as silk, dude. I mean, it just loves to kind of putt along using all that prodigious torque. Yeah, and there is something about that diesel platter and off-roading, which goes together, you know, like, uh, what, 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 Tim Hortons and, uh, what do you guys have? Donuts? Like Tim Hortons and Tukes. <laughs> there you go, that's a much better analogy, thank you. You know, Steve, oftentimes when we go test two vehicles, they're so similar, but not these two. No, these two are basically polar opposites for HDs. So I just got out of that GMC, and I mean, the power is effortless out of that diesel, but it's just so focused on hard work that it just doesn't do great off-road. Yeah, I would say if you want to tow your stuff to the trail, get the GMC, but if you want to take the trail, go for the power wagon. <laughs> Sounds about right to me. As always, this is Roman. And Steve. Saying check out TFL Off-Road for more news, views. And real world HD, Moab, snowy, muddy reviews. All right, so which one do you want to drive back home? <laughs> uh, I think I'll still take the Ram. All right, I'll take the GMC. See you guys That's next good. time. See you guys.